Got it. Today we're taking a look at Stop Thief. It is by Restoration Games, and they have restored this Dr. Robert Doyle classic from 1979 of the same name. Now, this game is for two to four players. A thief has committed a crime, and you are trying to find out where that thief is. You're going to be using an app that will play sounds to give you an idea of where the thief is moving. You'll have movement cards and some of them will have uh, special powers that allow you to gain tips, do extra movements, all sorts of other things. Your goal is to try and catch the thief before the other third investigators and collect that reward. So why don't we, uh oh, better take a look at the setup and walk through. I'll give you my thoughts. The Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this board game review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Alright, to set up the game, uh, you'll place the game board in the center of the table. It has four different locations of where the thief can commit their crime or crimes. We're going to set up for a two-player game, so you're just going to grab the meeple of the color of your choice. And when you do, you're also going to grab the investigator badge for that color and the cards that go with that color as well. The players will start on 500. This is at a subway station. We'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, then you have the thieves that are in the game and you can shuffle those and just place them to the side of the board. And then you have 1,000 and 5,000. Uh, each player is going to start the game with $3,000. Then you're going to need to go and get the Stop Thief app. And it's got some cool little music that plays during the intro. We'll go into this app in a little more in depth in a minute. But now you are ready to play. All right, let's talk about the game board. The uh, There is a subway station in the middle of the board. And then on each of the corners, there's a subway station as well. This allows players to move as a free action from one space to another. But when you do that action, uh, you have to uh, stop your movement on this square unless you, one of your uh, cards that you have uh, specifically state at the bottom here that you have additional moves. The board consists of uh, four different spaces. You got uh, Dr. Doyle's electronic store, you have swimmer tins, uh, then you have a museum of modern antiquity, and then you have Trust US Bank. Now for the rest of the review, we're just gonna focus in on half of the board so we can see a little more in detail how movement works, how the app works with the game, and what you need to do to win the game. Okay, I lied. We're just gonna focus in on a quarter of the board, and I think that'll be easier for us to see what is going on. Now, the object of the game is that you are an investigator, and there's going to be a crime that's committed in one of the four locations. The thief is hidden. You, there's no physical thief out here, so it's a hidden movement game. When a thief commits a crime, and we're going to use this again as the example, he's going to commit a crime on one of these four spaces. Whenever you hear the noise that a crime has been committed, you'll know that it's on these red spaces. Your job is to be able to move your investigator to the space where you think the thief is, or to be at least one space adjacent to where you think the thief is. And then you can make a guess 
theft or an arrest to see if you can capture that particular thief. All right, so at the beginning of the game, you're going to fire up the app from Restoration Games. As you can see right now, they have two games on their app, Th Stop Thief and Downforce. So you're gonna choose Stop Thief. And then from here, ooh, cool music, oh yeah. You know what I'm talking about. All right, that'll be enough. Now from here you can, uh, you know, go through the rules. You can resume a game that you've been playing or start a new game. We're gonna start a new game. And from here then, you are able to play Stop Thief or other ways to play. Now, uh, as you can see, there are some different modes that are going to be coming up and those are all grayed out. So those are not available yet. There is one, which is the uh, retro and that'll kind of give you the old sounds that you used to get from the 1979 game and kind of also look like the device uh, that they used back then. We, however, are going to choose a new game. Now from here, you have the ability to just play the standard game, which you would click the top button, but then there are some other ways that you can play. All right, for us, we're going to go ahead and click Stop Thief here. Now. For the game, and this is the standard game, as you can see at the top, it's going to give you the rules for that standard game. As far as uh, the thief will always go through doors and windows, the thief will never ride the subway, thief will never stay in the same place. Now you can change the mode that you want to play by clicking on the standard, and then you have intermediate, whoop, intermediate, advanced, classic, and then you can even set your own custom rules. For this, we're just going to use the standard game. Once you're ready, you're gonna hit start, and then it's going to give you, the first player is the first to shoot finger guns. So they usually have some kind of silly way to determine the first player, so. I'm going first. And you just click continue. Now, it's going to tell us that there is a crime that has been committed in Swinnerton's department store. That's not gonna work for our demo because we need a crime that happened right here in the museum. So, I'll be right back. Alrighty, a crime has been committed in the Museum of Modern Antiquity. <laughs> what a coincidence, that's right where our camera is. Perfect. Now, after that has been revealed, you're going to go ahead and reveal the thief for this round. There are a bunch of different thief cards that you can use. Uh, you're just gonna flip the top one over, and it's going to tell you what kind of, uh, what they're worth for capturing them. This one is 8,000. But then after collecting your reward, you choose another investigator to take 2,000 from the bank. It's kinda nice. Oh yeah. Uh, this is a $7,000 one. Add an extra thousand to this card every time he commits a new crime. So you have all different types of cards here. And so you just shuffle those and then you reveal that first one. So uh, as you can see, this will be the $8,000 for capturing him. Let's talk about how the thief will move throughout the game before we get into how you will move throughout the game. Now, uh, in a standard game, it's important to note that when a crime's committed, as we talked about earlier, it's, it will have happened on one of these spaces here. All right, when a thief moves from one location to another, they will move to the, uh, to the next number that is joined by footprints. Now, they will ignore any of these empty circles. So if the thief was here, the thief could go to 345, could go to 344, could walk to 354, could walk over to this door at 365. Those are the types of movements that the thief can make. The direction of the footsteps doesn't matter. Uh, it's just the thief will move from number to number. Also, when a thief moves, a thief, again, in the standard game, if the thief moves to, say, this door here, the thief on the next turn will not turn around and move back 
to the space they just came from. And if at any time a thief does go through or to a door or to a window, they will go through that door or through that window. They will not open a door and then go back into that room. Same here, they wouldn't move to the window and then on their next move, move back into the building. We talked about the subway in the standard game. Uh, the thief can walk on the subway tile, but cannot take the subway. Now each movement the thief makes has a unique tone and we'll hear those in a little bit. So on your turn, we're going to play as the blue player here, uh, you get to do three things. The first thing you get to do is get a clue. So you will take the device or somebody can take the device, you know, you're going to continue. And the first thing you do is play a clue. All right. So that means that the thief opened a door. You can replay that clue if you happen to miss it. Now this will only replay the last clue. So as the blue player, you can now begin to try and figure out where the thief is. If the thief started here, could have walked to this door to open it. If he was here, could have walked to this door and opened it. Could have went to this door and opened it. Here, could have went to this door or to this door. He could not have gone to this door or to this one because there are numbers in between. So he would have had to stop here before moving on to the door. Here before moving on to this door. And the thief could have went from here to here or from here to here. So there are a number of places where that thief could have went. After you've been given a clue, you now have your cards. Now the players are asymmetrical, so all these cards are not going to be the same. Now, many of them have a, a few of the same things on them, but they're, the number of spaces they can move and some of the text at the bottom can change. So for example, uh, the blue player here, before moving can get a private tip. Talk about that in a minute. During your move, you may move onto or through any window spaces. All right, something we need to talk about as far as the movements and we'll talk about the movements here for uh, the investigators in a second. But just know that you can never go through a window unless you have a card that specifically says so. And this one also says you can move through window spaces as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your cards and you're going to play them. They're one time use. Okay. The only time you can get your cards back is if you play your card that says at the end of your turn, pick up all of your movement cards. All right, let's talk about how the investigators move. Investigators can move along every spot or, or must actually move along every spot on the door or on the board. So if uh, the blue player here, we're, we're going to probably um, try to go through this door and come up this way uh, just to kind of at least get us positioned into this room where we know the thief currently is. Now we talked about the subway. Uh, you know, you could take the subway over to this space for one move, but uh, you have to end your movement at that point. Doors are also considered a space. So if you were going to move in here, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you cannot, again, you can't skip any of the spaces, whether they're numbered or not. And you must also move along the footprint path as well. You couldn't come here and then jump over here because there's no footprints between the two. The same thing here, you couldn't come here and then jump over here and then jump over here because there is not a footprint path between those three spaces. Investigators cannot share the same space. You can move through the same space as an investigator, but you cannot end your turn there. The only exception is you can, more than one investigator can be at a subway spot at the same time. So now that the investigator has gotten her clue, uh, she's going to play a card and she's going to play a big one. She's going to play her 11 card. Uh, so that'll get her to move one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Kind of getting her into the center of the building since there are multiple places that the thief can be. Now as your final action, you can make an arrest. To make an arrest, you'll be picking the uh, number that you think the thief is on. You have to either be on it or adjacent to that space to be able to make that arrest. If you're successful, you'll you'll get you know the eight thousand dollars plus whatever bonus uh, that was on the card as well, if any. But if you're wrong, you will lose a thousand dollars. Since the blue pair player knows that three forty four technically could be one of the spaces the thief is at, and because we're doing a demo, she's going to go ahead and make an arrest. So when you go to make an arrest, uh, you will press that, and then you'll put in the number that you think uh, the thief is at. We think 344. All right, once you've placed that in, because that's the number right here. Remember, the thief could have moved from here to here. You'll go ahead and hit confirm. She has to pay $1,000 to the bank, and then her turn is over. Now the uh, purple player will get to get a clue. Oh, opened another door. All right, so let's let's think about it here. We'll just put this down. You know, the thief committed a crime, you know, could have went to this door, but then would have had to go here, so couldn't have gone to another door here. Uh, the thief could have went from here to this door and then to this door. So the purple player is thinking, hmm, could possibly be in 373. Now the purple player does kind of have a huge problem. To get over to that space, you're going to have to do a path just like this all the way around to get all the way over to this door. Because you have windows here and you can't go through them. And if the thief is here, it's gonna take a while. So the purple player is gonna take the subway over here. Now, um, when he plays a card, of course, he's not going to be able to move once he moves here. That's the end of his turn. So um, he's gonna just go ahead and play a lower card but he's going to play the card that says get a private tip now when you get a private tip you can take that it says it says before moving you get a private tip when you get a private tip you'll be handed the device and then you're going to click on get a private tip when you do this we'll go ahead and say get a private tip it tells you exactly where the thief is no way so the thief is exactly where the purple player believes he is. Now he'll make take his movement. He can only move one, can't move the other two, so his turn is over. The blue player now will go, and the first thing you do is get a clue. Ah, that's the glass breaking. So, probably, since he's going to go through the door, it's probably right here at 384. So the blue player is going to play the aid, and this is the one that allows you to move through windows. Now, we're not gonna be moving through the window, but she could if she wanted to. So to move her eight, she's gonna move here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this will put her adjacent to 384, and that allows her then to try to make that arrest. However, let's listen to some of the other uh, sounds that the thief could make. So let's say she didn't guess for whatever reason. The next player gets a clue. So you heard the footprints with outside noise. That means that you know that the thief is now walking outside here from number to number. All right, and when you hear the, the very echoey footsteps, that means that they are walking inside the building as well. Right, I picked up a, another private tip as we want to uh, go ahead and get through the, uh, the uh, 
video here. He's at 375. So what did the thief do? He broke through the window. He walked over to there, walked to here, then walked to this door, and then walked inside to this space. If the blue player was right here or even on the 375, she could then make that arrest. Go ahead and put in your 375. Confirm. Alrighty, so that thief has been caught. It's going to ask you at the bottom, was that enough points uh, after you've collected your reward to uh, win the game? If you click no, then the game continues playing with another uh, crime in a different area. The blue player would collect the $8,000 and give $2,000 from the bank to another player. There's only one other player, so the purple would get $2,000 for that. Uh, then you can give this card to the player who captured him. That's what, that's what we do. And then another crime is going to be committed. You're going to turn over that next card. The cards that you have played stay down. You do not pick up all your cards at the start of a new round. So the only time you can pick those up is to play the card that allows you to pick those up. Again, uh, in a two-player game, you'll need to get to $45,000. Once you have done that, you'll be the winner of the game. Okay, so that was Stop Thief. Now, as I mentioned in that ridiculous opener, yes, indeed. Uh, this game was from 1979. It was created by Dr. Robert Doyle. And this is a game that I had completely forgotten about until I saw the Kickstarter. When I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, I remember playing that game a long time ago with that uh, you know uh, well here I'll, I'll show you uh, some pictures of the original components you had the uh, uh, board with roll and move you had this you know 1970s 80s component which you know at the time was um, very modern thinking as far as board gaming went so when I saw this Kickstarter by Restoration Games, you know, I got kind of excited to kind of relive some of that nostalgia. Restoration Games is doing things like that. They're taking these old games, restoring them, putting new polish on them, updating the rules, um, the components, and modernizing them for today's board gamers. Now, the components of the game, uh, the, the artwork, the artwork that you have on the Thief cards, and on the board itself is very good. I, I like it. The, the movement cards, for me, they're, they're okay. They, they don't have any art, uh, but they do make them easy to see. The numbers are nice and big. Uh, they're easy to read as far as what the special powers are on some of those movement cards. I also like the fact that uh, you have, you know, cards for money instead of paper money. Now the meeples are nice. Each of them uh, wooden component that uh, have some customization that kind of match the character that you're playing. They're not just the color, they also have artwork on them. Again, that's a nice touch. They're thin and tall, so they do tend to fall over a little more easily, but because of the spaces on the board, those circles on the board are are small, it's kind of ne necessary for them to have uh, a thin component so it doesn't get too crowded. So I understood why they did that. Then you have the board itself and these footprints on there. I thought this was a fantastic touch to use the footprints to basically draw your lines between each of the movement spaces. They didn't just go with dashes. They decided to uh, use those footprints and not only that, they put a glossy finish on them so it really looks well. You probably couldn't see it in the video, but you know, if you tilted the board, you could see a nice gloss finish on all the footprints. I thought that was an excellent uh, uh, ad for the game. Now the app for the game is very well done. And I like that when you go into it, they've, uh, there are new modes that are coming that'll be free. The, the app is already free, 
uh, to download, but they have some other modes that they're going to be coming out with to keep the game fresh uh, and add to the replayability. Uh, for example, they have a one versus all mode coming. They also have a cooperative mode coming. So in addition to, you know, having the various difficulty levels uh, within the app and within the actual Stop Thief core game, uh, they're looking to add, and they've said they'll be adding more modes as well. The clues are very easy to hear and see. So if you wanted to play with someone who is hard of hearing or deaf, the clue, uh, of course, is played, and, and it's played loud enough. Now, obviously, it's going to depend on your device, but I've played this now a couple of times on a game night at a game store where there was a lot of background noise, and we could hear the clues clearly. But not only that, the app also gives you a picture, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, an animation of what you're hearing as well. So that helps, especially if it's noisy or you have trouble hearing. Now one thing I wish the app had was a timer. The reason I think I would like to see a timer, maybe a once you hit get a clue, maybe if a one minute and 30 second or a two minute timer uh, started counting down would help the game, especially when you're playing with four players. Uh, Sometimes you will have a player or players who get that clue and then they spend a lot of time. You know the answer. You, you know where the thief is at. And they are going back, trying to remember every single clue, trying to retrace every single step to try and locate them while you're like, come on, I know it. I want to answer. I want to catch him. I want to catch him. Would you please just move? So it can kind of slow that down uh, between your turns. So... Uh, you know, if they added a timer, maybe that would help with people saying, okay, I only have two minutes to make a decision of what I'm going to do, where I'm going to move, and whether or not I'm going to make a guess. Uh, maybe it would help speed up the game. Not that it's a long game. That doesn't happen every turn, but it can, especially as the rounds go on and people are trying to, you know, go back and try to figure out all the different clues, all the different possibilities of where that thief could have moved to. Now, as far as the gameplay, I think it is done very smoothly. I do tend to think that the standard can start to feel uh, maybe a little too easy. Not overly simple, but especially when you're playing with three or four player counts, it gets to the point where it's, you know, it's hard to get in place to try and get to the thief. Everybody kind of knows where he's at. But there are other modes that ramp up the difficulty, whether it's a classic, intermediate, or advanced modes. So they've, you know, uh, mitigated maybe some of the easier way to, to uh, play the game by having these different modes, and I think that was an excellent choice. I like that the movement cards are somewhat asymmetrical. All of the sets have some things that are kind of the same like getting the private tip but uh, there is some variety between the different players the thief bonuses are different so it changes the way you look at trying to capture that thief as well overall this game is just really fun I enjoy this hidden movement game I enjoy having the asymmetrical cards it is fun to sit there and try to deduce where that thief is and that satisfying feeling when you know where he is and you go to arrest him and you know the app plays that and you've caught him it it really is a very well done game restoration games did an excellent job with this i'm giving this game a nine now if you enjoyed this review please leave a like below Subscribe to our channel and check out our other great videos. And once again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for visiting the Arch Gaming Network. For more great content, check us out at archgamingnetwork.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.